Okay, next tutorial. Um, once again, I've brought along the fabulous Cheryl or the Chaiish. I'll put a link there. Um, thank you so much for modelling for me again, Cheryl. So this look is hopefully you can tell is the Black Swan or from the Black Swan, Natalie Portman. Um, it was actually requested by I'm not going to bother saying the name because it's going to take forever. I'll just put it there. So thank you for <laughs> requesting the look. Let's just say Mister. Um, <laughs> Okay, so stay tuned if you want to see how to recreate this look. Okie dokie, so to start off with, um, I'm going to be concealing my model's neck and chest area. Not because you need it, it's just we're going for like the flawless look and God knows Natalie Portman, flawless as she is anyway, looks extra flawless in this film. So I'm using an NW15 Studio Fix Concealer by MAC. Just it's nice and pale but it's not too theatrical, okay? I'm just going to apply that where I need to apply it and we'll start on the next step. And then I'm just going to blend that out with a dry foundation brush. Um, I'm going to use the same products that I'm going to use on her face as well. And that's just going to be on the lower half here. So any blemishes or any marks or anything from the cheekbone downwards on both sides. Because it's going to be more white on the top half. Okie dokie. Okay, and then I'm just going to blend that with a slightly damp brush. Just blend it outwards. Okay, so now I'm going to use some MAC Studio Fix Fluid in the same NW15 colour. Okay, and I'm just going to apply that again, just tapering it off at the cheekbones. So just on the lower half of my model's face, and I've done the neck area already. Okay, and then I'm just going to set that in place with some Grimace Translucent Powder. And then just brush off any excess powder. Okay, and then I'm going to mix about three parts of some Snazaroo, if you can see that clown white, it's like a, just a white cream base basically. I'm going to mix that with about one or two drops of the same foundation I've been using, so it will give the white um, effect, but it will be slightly fleshy toned, you'll see what I mean. Okay, and that's going to go on the top half of my model's face. and then going to blend that outwards. So when you get to the part where it joins on between the white and the uh, skin colour foundation, we're just going to buff that out, just not pulling too much of it into it. You, it's difficult to describe, it's just tapering it off so there's not a fine line, basically. You'll notice that um, I've left these areas here for the free of colour, just purely because that's where the black's going to go and I don't want it to mix, I want it to be like pure black. So it's kind of like contouring really, I mean we've got the cheekbones and the, mainly the bridge of my model's nose and my forehead, that's where why this makeup is so clever, I mean yeah it just it highlights, so we're still going to do contouring but this takes care of a lot of it. So now I'm going to use the translucent powder again to set it but this time I'm going to use it quite heavily, like pressing it in around models cheekbones especially. Okay, and then again brush the excess off. Okay, I'm then going to take um, a Collection 2000 felt uh, eyeliner pen. I, I love this, I use this so much now because it just it gives such perfect lines and the colour's really thick and dense. Plus I want to get this I need, I need an applicator that's really, really precise, because the shape of this, it's going to be easy for me to draw these lines on and fill in the in-between with the silver rather than just painting it on black and going over the top of it. Okay, so I'm just going to trace on the shape that I want. Okay, so this general shape, so following the eyebrow along and just flicking up at the edges, we want it to be in line with the eye going upwards so it enhances the cheekbones a little bit. 
I've just literally roughly gone in and drawn in the eyes. Let's just close your eyes for me. Just random lines, not colouring it in completely. It does not have to be neat because that's what the silver's for. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to be using this cream eyeshadow. It's, um, I say eyeshadow, it can be used anywhere, but it's by Maybelline. It's called Colour Tattoo by Studio, something like that, 24 hours. It's basically a cream silver. <laughs> the idea is I'm going to load the brush up, a small brush like that, and I'm just going to colour in between the lines. So the idea is there's going to be an equal ratio to black to silver. That's what we're going for. Okay. Okay, so just like that, yep, okie dokie, so it's just a random pattern, as long as some of the black lines join up and there's silver, block silver in between, that's that. Don't worry about underneath the eye, I'm going to do that last, okay? So I'm going to do exactly the same on the other eye, and we can start on the underneath. Okie dokie, then I'm going to be using a Collection 2000 Gel Eyeliner, which is amazing. It's really, really thick. I used to use the MAC Fluid line, but this seems this is, is a lot more workable, to be honest, and it's a lot darker. So I'm going to use this underneath my model's eyes, so I'm just going to get it to look up, and I'm just going to literally line underneath. We're not going to go further than the line I've already drawn, which is the idea is to make the eyes look as dark as possible. Okay. Okay, and then just took a just a fluffy brush and I just literally just gently rubbed out the edges so that it's not a harsh line, so it's ever so slightly blended outwards. Okay, and then I'm going to take a medium false eyelash, so not insanely thick, just to add an extra bit of depth to the eye. And I'm just going to apply those to my model's natural lashes. Okay, now I'm going to take some Maybelline Illegal Length Mascara, because this stuff is amazing. And I'm just going to apply this to my model's lashes and obviously the false lashes, just to bond them together. And it'll just make them look that extra dark, extra thickness, and yeah. Okay, so by then you should have like a nice flutter going on, basically. So not like ridiculously long, just elegant. Yeah. <laughs> Very nearly said swan-like then, but that would be daft. So... Okay, so the lipstick I'm going to be using is, this is a beautiful colour, this is the closest we could, I could get really to this colour. It's called Black Cherry, number 477, it's by Revlon. It's a beautiful colour, it's like a deep red, per it's, yeah, almost purpley red, it's lovely. Okay, so it's just going to be just a regular lip shape, fairly full bottom lip, but no, not, no real definition on the Cupid's bow area really. Okay, so, um, finally, I'm going to do some, just a little tiny, tiny bit of contour. I've already got the cheekbones, the enhanced cheekbone look, but I'm just going to add a bit more depth into that. So I'm going to use some Clinique. It's like bronzer, but I don't really use it as bronzer. It's that delicate brown. It's not too harsh. I'm going to use a tiny bit of that just where the cheekbones start. Really not much. I'm just tapering it off. Okay, just... I also went in just on around just the jawline here and here on my model, not going beyond near the chin at all, just with the br uh, the bronzer, or the shader rather, just because Natalie Portman's got that iconic jawline, that beautiful jawline. I, I just think that woman's stunning, but hey. Um, okay, so now that's done, I'm going to do the highlighting. Now I'm going to be using this white, it's by MUA, uh, it's like Makeup Academy white. It's just so pigmented, it's lovely. Plus, I mean, I can get a nice fluffy brush in there and say, I'm going to literally do that uh, on the apples, well, my, my model's cheekbones, down the bridge of her nose and her forehead. Not heavily. Just think of it as the, using it as translucent powder. Think of it as you're using it to press in and set the colour. Okay, so just, just like that. Okay, so to complete the look, um, as I mean, I should have said to begin with, my model's hair, I put her hair back into a bun, so it's slick or completely off her face, okay? Um, and I used a tiara that I've made, just, I'll do a tutorial on it if you guys want to see how to make it, it's just 
it's just I, I, it's difficult to describe it's not a regular tr it's like a black spiky it's made out of different parts of card that i glued together on an ice pan sprayed it black basically does the job i think yeah <laughs> basically um and yeah i've attached a feather boa to my model's outfit just to make it look more leotardy um also i didn't bother filming it because it's not something you have to do but um in the film she has really rough painted hands so i just quickly took some snazzy black watercolor smudged on the area and used some of that silver um maybelline color just down the the bones of model's hands just to look rough and you don't have to do it it's just that's what she has in the film and it will look quite effective also i have to say a big shout out to john the person who guessed um correctly the um, Bride of Frankenstein inspired look I did previously on my Facebook page. I'll put the link in the description below because every week I do a, or every time I do a new tutorial, I'll put a little snapshot of name that tutorial. And if you get it right, I'll put you in the name of your shout out. Yeah, basically. So, well done. Um, <laughs> so, um, that is my black swan makeup. So, um, thank you guys for watching. I really hope you like it. Thank you, Cheryl, again for modeling. modeling. You are, as always, an amazing model. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, um, until next time. Bye.